Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. Onk Live Insights features in-depth reports, feature segments, and profiles of leaders in clinical medicine, providing expert perspectives in cancer care and emerging research. I think the next uh, phase is going to be monoclonal antibodies. Uh, there's a couple of them already in uh, phase three trials. We uh, have elotuzumab, which targets CS1, a protein which is pretty much present on all myeloma. So for those patients, one of the key factors that we think is important is minimizing the exposure to alkylator agents. And so for that reason, our standard upfront regimen for all newly diagnosed fit patients is RVD, lenalidomide with bortezomib and dexamethasone. Hello, I'm Joe Petrozello, Head of Clinical Affairs with Oncolive.com. We recently sat down with some of the world's leading experts to gain their insights on the latest clinical advances in cancer care. In this Oncolive Insights video editorial series, we will review the latest clinical advances in the treatment of multiple myeloma. Let's get started by discussing an overview of the diagnosis of multiple myeloma. Um, what imaging techniques do you routinely use? So, you know, things have evolved over time now, Joe, and it's becoming incredibly important to incorporate more imaging as we go forward. In fact, uh, our International Myeloma Working Group is going to come up with newer uh, 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 parameters so that we are better able to incorporate some of the newer imaging techniques. If you go by our old standards, we've classically included a skeletal survey, which is x-rays of all the bones as an Im imaging modality, and um, which was a good tool. But the problem with that tool is, uh, you know, it's only a sensitive. So it's positive in about 60 to 70 percent of people with myeloma. Now, given that we have uh, CAT scans, PET CT scans and MRIs, we are beginning to incorporate some of these more and more so in our diagnostic workup of myeloma. We don't do it for everybody. And if you look at the NCCN guidelines, uh, you know, we have them as indicated where necessary. Now, in my practice at least, uh, the parts where I feel it's absolutely essential are in certain situations. So if you're dealing with somebody with a plasma cytoma, for example, a plasma cytoma is an isolated collection of plasma cells localized and you want to make sure that there's nothing else going on in this patient, a PET CT scan can be incredibly useful, or even an MRI can be very useful. Other places where I think some of these imaging modalities are becoming more and more important and more and more um, used by all of us is situations such as patients who have oligosecretory disease, so do not secrete a lot of protein, and in these folks, uh, uh, you know, sometimes hard to kind of follow them. A lot of times we have these patients present with kind of macrofocal disease, so multiple plasma cytomas, and yet they do not have a good biomarker in the bloodstream. Those are the patients, again, where I would certainly use a PET CT scan. Uh, we are now beginning to do a lot of studies around a precursor condition called smoldering myeloma, and a lot of times to try and discriminate between smoldering and multiple myeloma, I think more and more of us are using more specific imaging tools, and those specific imaging to, uh, tools, uh, it, it could be a PET CT scan or an MRI, but certainly, you know, just relying on an X-ray or skeletal survey is not enough in that situation, and we're beginning to use more of that going forward. Hello, Dr. Lonio. Hello. Thank you for joining me today for this OncLive Insights video editorial program on the treatment of multiple myeloma. So let's begin by discussing um, the treatment landscape in multiple, multiple myeloma and how uh, recent advances have sort of changed your treatment. So I think the world of uh, treatment for newly diagnosed myeloma patients has really changed dramatically over the last 10 years. Uh, 10 years ago, we were using old-fashioned regimens like VAD or VAD, or thalidomide and dexamethasone-based inductions. And now more recently, we're going to triplets and sometimes quadruplets of, in, of new drugs in terms of induction therapy. And the net benefit to patients has been that we've dramatically changed the overall survival with more than doubling the median overall survival from two and a half to three years up to seven, and in many cases, 10 plus years. And I would argue that there's a fraction of patients, somewhere around 15 to 20%, who are probably cured of myeloma now using current standard therapies such as lenalidomide, bortezomib, dexamethasone, 
with or without maintenance therapy, and high-dose therapy and autologous transplant. So these changes have really been quite dramatic.